Hey, hey, math friends. So our learning target today is the same learning target that we had, but because it's such an important skill for the future of algebra, we want to make sure you have this nailed down. So I can find the slope of a line using rise over run again. Day two, our job is to find the slope. So if we think through everything we talked about yesterday, we think through the slope person idea of positive, negative, undefined, and zero. We're going to use that same skill set to calculate the slope. So we're going to dive right in. There isn't really any notes to take since we covered this already yesterday. But if we talk about this first example, we have an increasing line. So that's a positive slope. We build our rectangle. Build it, build it. Drive it down. Build it, build it. Good, good. Our rise then is two units. So two units is the rise our height because it's really a rectangle of base times height so that's our height or our rise and our run is one two three units so our slope m is positive two-thirds so our first question has a slope of positive two-thirds that's a complete review from yesterday so we're just doing more practice it is that crucial of a skill all right next question so we have a decrease in line here so we're going to say that the slope is negative. We build our rectangle. And we have one, one, two, three units. So the rise is three, and it's negative because it's a decreasing line. Let's switch pens here. There we go. And then our run is one, two. So we have three units for the rise or the height and two units for the run or the width. Decreasing line, so it's negative. So it's a negative three over two. And that would be our slope of our line. That cannot be reduced because they're both prime numbers. So our answer for slope in this question is that the slope is equal to negative three over two. So wait, next problem. This is a decreasing line. So we have a decreasing line would be a negative slope. So negative on the rise. We build our rectangle, drive it down, turn the corner, drive it up, turn the corner. Our rise would be three units. Our run would be three units. To simplify this particular problem, we would end up with negative one. So the slope of this line is equal to negative one. Awesome. Next problem, next page. I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you do these three. So go ahead and try these three problems. Pause the video. It's the same thing we did yesterday, but I need 100% mastery. All right. So you should have tried these. If we think of slope person, we get positive, negative, undefined, and zero. Coolio. So as we check, we have a decreasing line here. Decreasing means it's a negative slope. We build our rectangle, take it down, turn the corner, up, turn the corner. Our rise then is three units. So our height or our rise is three units. Our run then is four units. So the slope of this line is negative three force. Cannot be reduced. Hopefully you got, you can give yourself a star there. Like I nailed it. I have that one. And I know you don't have the graphs with you. So you're kind of reading off the screen, but you should still be writing the answer down in your work. Super important skill. I know I keep saying that, but I cannot tell you how important this is. So here we go. We have an increasing line. So it's positive. We look at our slope person, positive, right? We build our rectangle. So rectangle, I have a data point there and a data point there. We're going to rise, turn the corner, turn the corner, go down, turn the corner. Ooh, nice tiny little graph here. We got a rise of one. It's positive because the line's increasing, and it looks like a run of two. So our slope then in lowest terms is one half. It's already in lowest terms. Give yourself a star on your paper if you nailed that one. Next question. This is an increasing line, so it's positive. Awesome. We are going to build our rectangle. Here we go. So we're going to drive it down, turn the corner, drive it up, turn the corner. So we end up with one, two, three, four, five as our rise. One, two, three, four is our run. So we have a positive five. 
over 4, our slope is positive 5 fourths. That's a review from yesterday's work. Hopefully you nailed it. All right, so let's take a look at some other scenarios then. What about this problem here? So if we read the, the graph, we have a situation where we're talking about the amount of water in gallons compared to the time. So our assumption would be that the line is decreasing. The amount of water is decreasing over the course of time. What would be an example of that? Maybe there's a slow leak in the bottom of a pool. Maybe a bathtub is draining. Maybe we're talking about the Culligan Man water jug over the course of time. Um, that as people are drinking water out of the Culligan water jug, the line is decreasing. So the slope, we know how to calculate slope. It's the rate of change. So first thing I would identify is that the line is decreasing. So part A, we have a decreasing line. I'm going to identify two data points. These are all really good data points, but I'm just going to take these two. If I build my rectangle, build it, build it, build it, build it, that we have a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. That's 5 units tall. And we have a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. So my slope is negative 1. Negative 1 what? So we're really talking negative 1 gallons. I'm going to highlight this so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Negative 1 gallons per hour. So what does this mean? I'm going to move this question down here simply because I don't have space. Negative 1 gallons. We're talking about loss. Loss of negative 1 gallons because it's negative per hour hour. So if we're talking Culligan Man, we're losing a gallon of water per hour as people are drinking out of it, maybe at the state fair or something as they have that free water. So what does this mean? That means that the rate of change, the slope, is that we're losing one gallon of water per hour. It's coming from that negative one there. At what time will all the water be gone? So one way to look at that is that we can just problem solve that if there's five gallons and we're losing one gallon per hour, it would be five hours. Just mental math says that each hour is a gallon gone. But you also can see very clearly on the graph that right here, that that's the amount of water, that's the coordinate five, zero. So at hour, at hour five, there's no water in the tank. So five hours. So what is the slope? Negative 1. What does it mean? It means that there's we're losing a gallon of water per hour. And at what time will the water be gone? At 5 hours, water's gone. So this is how we would apply it to a real-world situation using kind of all of the same skills we've been doing recently in mathematics. All right, let's take a look at another example. This problem is very similar in style. So what does the point 0, 0.05 mean? So if we look at the point 0, 0.05, we're talking about the amount of gas in a tank in gallons compared to the miles traveled. So it should make sense to you that um, over the course of time driving, you're losing gas out of the tank until you fill it back up. So the point 0, 0.05 in this particular problem, what does it mean? It means at zero miles, if you haven't moved yet, that you have five gallons in your tank. So what is the slope? Well, we could rise run it. So we can see that we have a decreasing line. Again, guys, I'm out of space here. So the slope would be that we have a decreasing, remember that means the letter M, a decreasing line, because you can see that the line is decreasing. I picked two data points, just like we've been practicing here. In here, be very careful about the scale this time. Build my rectangle. All right. Watch the units here. This is going by ones. I'm going to do that in red because we can see it better. This is going by ones. So we're going down to what? Two gallons. We're going down two gallons per what? Now be very careful on this run here because it's really going by 50, 100 miles. 
So we lose two gallons every, I don't know why I put a two there, every 100 miles. Because that's what the scale says. If we put this in lowest terms, we divide this by two and that by two, we'd end up that we're losing one gallon of gas every 50 miles we travel. So that's how we would read the, um, the graph. Now these are equal. Those are equal. They're they're, the reduction in gas is happening at the same speed. So how much, what would be the gallons left for 150 miles? So if we start with five gallons, I'm just going to mental math it. What would be the gallons left for 150 miles? So I'm going to have you pause the video at this point and kind of problem solve that. Okay, so there's lots of ways to approach this. You can mental math it. You can do lots of things. But if you are losing one gallon every 50 miles, I'm actually going to erase this part just because I need a spot to, read, to, to write it. So if I'm losing one gallon for 50 miles, and you can get to this answer however you problem solved it. If I can get my pen to work here, we'll be in good shape, guys. One gallon for 50 miles means that we would lose two gallons in 100 miles. Three gallons in 150 miles. So they're asking how much would be left at 150 miles. So five gallons is what we started with. Take away the three gallons would mean that there's only two gallons left at 150 miles. So any way you slice it to get to that understanding of what's happening. Go ahead and pause. Rewind. That's not the only way to solve it. You could set up a proportion. You could look for a pattern, so on. So on. I just picked kind of a method to solve. All right. Couple left. So this problem here. It's the consumer demand of televisions based on given prices, right? So we can see that we have a decreasing line. So we have a decreasing slope. So if we look at our y-axis, we can see that the price of television per billion, cost per billion, compared to the quantity of televisions per billion. So we have a decreasing line. If we identify the two data points, and we build our rectangle, we have 30 billion we're, and just notice here i had to pause because i couldn't see it so small but it does say per billion we're talking price so the decrease negative line of 30 30 billion dollars per television now these are going by fives so per 35 billion tvs so if we were to put that in lowest terms that 30 billion a loss of demand for 30 billion per 35 billion TVs, if we were to divide that out, what is a factor, sorry, my son keeps coming in and out of here, um, and that's I'm, that's why I'm getting distracted. I'm like, buddy, you gotta go. Uh, divide by five on each of those gives us minus six billion per seven billion TVs. So the price, per 7 billion TVs. So the consumer based on the given, the demand based on the price. So that would be the slope or the rate that it's changing. So a loss of 6 billion per 7 billion TVs. All right. That's how we read slope. I'm going to erase that so I have some space over here. On the right side, describe and correct the error that was made. So take a look at that problem. Now my son is cheering for the Vikings out there. Um, describe and correct the error. So if we were to take a peek at this, 
it should be a positive slope. So if we look at the answer that they are given, which we say that there's an error there, they do have a positive slope. Let's take a look at the rise and the run. The rise, one, two, three, four, five. And the run, one, two, three, four. Ah, what's the error? They have it flipped. They have it wrong. They have the run over the rise. That's the error. So be able to spot that. All right, most likely one more problem for today, and then we'll be out of here. So which of these has the greatest slope? So we're wondering which one has um, the, the greatest slope or the steepest, growing at the fastest rates. Um, you should say that A is the steepest. You could prove that by running some rectangles here, some little rectangles. So this is a rise 3 over run 1. I should have done that in green, but I didn't. B, if I take a look at B then, I'm just proving, I'm just proving, proving, proving that that is correct. Um, any of these data points would work. little tiny rectangle there would be 1 over 1, the slope is. And then C... Then I erase that. And C would be, there's a good data point right there, one third. So clearly A is the greatest slope, but it's really easy to see in a picture once you get the hang of this. That's whichever one is the steepest. It's gro That means it's growing at the fastest rate. Um, if that's your bank account, you want that to be ha that you want it to be that one, the one that's the steepest. If it is your, um, yeah. So if it's the amount of money you owe somebody, you don't want that to be the steepest. You don't want it to be growing at the fastest rate. All right, one more set of problems, and then we. I th I know I said we were done, but I think we're gonna just do one more quick review and make sure you got this. Okay, last three problems of today changed my mind. I get to do that because I'm behind the mic. Check, check. Pause video. Check those last three. Come on. All right, let's give these a shot. You should be unpausing the video. Super important skill on slope. We have a decreasing line here, so we're going to build that rectangle. Do it, do it, do it, do it. We get one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a decrease of six over one, two, three, four. So if we divide top and bottom by two, we end up with negative three over two. So the slope of that line is negative three over two. Grade your paper. Give yourself a star if you have it. Cool, cool, cool. Next problem. All right, next problem here. Build your rectangle. That's an increasing line, so it's positive. We end up with 1, 2, 3, 4 as the rise. Over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the run. So your slope should be positive four fifths. Give yourself a star if you have that. And how did you do on the very last one? Check it, check it, check it out. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We have a decreasing line. One, two, three, four. Uh-huh. Down. Over one, two, three. We can't reduce that. So the slope of that last line is negative four thirds. So in summary for today, slope man, slope person. Eventually I'll get that. Those are the four types of things that can happen. Positive, negative, undefined, and zero. And then we also talked about how to analyze situational slope. When we have gas coming out of a tank, what does it mean? Remember, everything is measured by rise over run. And in my little analogy of the rectangle, it's really the height of the rectangle over the base of the rectangle. Just a quick little tidbit. All right, guys, this is a super important skill. Make sure you understand this. Have a glorious day.